Hi guys, in this lecture we are going to develop the rest of the actuator disk theory and to make sure that you really understand what's happening here I want to go right from the fundamentals and to do so we are going to look at the laws of Bernoulli uh, we're going to apply them to the actuator disk theory the way we pictured it in the last lecture and we are going to develop our final equations and see exactly how we can use uh, this in practical cases, in real life, in engineering design and drone design or aircraft design. Basically, what we are going to do is apply Bernoulli's equation upstream of the actuator disk and down, downstream sorry, of the actuator disk. Okay, so what Bernoulli's equations say is that if you don't have any addition of energy, any work done to the, the, the stream tube or the fluid in the stream tube, basically the total pressure, also called the stagnation pressure, will remain constant. So what we do is we apply it before the actuator disk and after the actuator disk to say that either side of the disk um, in the stream tube the total pressure is constant, but they're not equal, right? So the total pressure is higher after the disc than before the disc. We saw that before, okay? Because the disc does work on the fluid. So this is actually translated to the equations that you can see right here. First of all, the first line, we actually apply this upstream of the actuator disc before the actuator disc. And we can say that the total pressure um, just before the disc, so uh, P1, the static pressure, plus half rho times the velocity of the fluid at the disk squared is equal to the atmospheric pressure uh, and the, the kinetic, uh, sorry, the dynamic pressure, so half rho V0 squared. And what that means is that very far upstream in the strip tube, in the, stream tube uh, the total pressure is equal to to the total pressure that is just next to the actuator disk, just before it, okay? Because P0 and V0 are the properties very far upstream, as we just saw uh, before, and it's just here on the diagram that you can see here, and P1 and V disk are just before the disk, okay? We can then uh, develop this to actually rewrite it uh, in a way that states that uh, half rho V D squared minus P0 is equal to half rho V0 squared minus P1, and we'll see just in the next line why we wrote it this way. So the next line, the second line on the slide, uh, equation-wise, actually states the same thing, but you know, just after the disk, we now have that the static pressure P2 plus half rho uh, Vd squared, which is the velocity at the disk, is equal to P0 plus half rho Ve squared, P0 being the, to the static pressure very far downstream uh, in the stream tube and VE being the velocity very far, very far downstream in the strip tube, stream tube. Sorry. Okay. So again, this is Bernoulli stating that the total pressure is constant uh, after the, the actuator disk. So we can rewrite that again in a way. And what we want is actually get rid of um, the redundant variable. So basically, uh, we don't have to calculate V disk again. So we can get rid of V disk and we can get rid of P0. And this allows us, uh, so you can see that we just write um, the second equation, the second line in a similar way to the first one. Uh, and then this finally gives that half rho V E squared minus P2 is equal to half rho V0 squared minus P1. And then we can rewrite that again to state that the static pressure just after the disk P2 minus the static pressure just before the disk P1 is equal to the um, to half multiplied by rho, the air density or the fluid density at the current altitude, uh, multiplied by Ve squared minus V0 squared. Okay, And what that means is that the difference in static pressure either side of the disk is actually equal to um, the difference in dynamic pressure uh, very far downstream and very far upstream of the disk, essentially. So, again, as I just mentioned, V disk is not a measurable uh, value, it's a theoretical value because actually uh, in real life the propellers are not solid disks and we have uh, here in this theory um, a singularity which means a very sudden increase, uh, which uh, not in velocity but uh, in static pressure and total pressure essentially, 
which means that a V disk is not practically measurable. So we actually got rid of it when we did the equivalence thing uh, just above. So we can now actually calculate the thrust uh, created and derived uh, from continuity. So what continuity means is that if you have a fixed uh, volume, I mean a, um, a movement of fluid that is bound where fluid cannot exit or enter the tube, uh, essentially like we theorized our stream tube to be, uh, then the amount of uh, mass, so the mass flow rate entering the tube must be the same as the mass flow rate leaving the tube. This makes sense, right? You can have fluid uh, randomly appearing or disappearing uh, inside of the tube. It needs to be added or extracted, and if there is no way to do that, then the mass flow rate must be constant, okay? So from the previous lecture, we actually know that T, the thrust, is equal to the mass flow rate W multiplied by VE minus V0, uh, respectively being the velocity far downstream uh, and the velocity far upstream. We also know that W, the mass flow rate, is equal to rho A disk, so rho being uh, the fluid density at the current altitude, A disk, uh, the area of the disk, so the area of the propeller, and V disk, the theoretical velocity at the propeller. Okay, so what we can write first of all is that we saw before that V disk is actually equal to the average between VE and V0, so VE plus V0 divided by 2. Uh, what that gives is that the mass flow rate W is equal to rho A disk, sorry, VE plus V0, the whole divided by 2. Uh, and we can therefore also write that the thrust T is equal to rho A disk VE plus V0 divided by 2 multiplied by VE minus V0. And most of you will recognize this identity. VE plus V0 multiplied by VE minus V0 is equal to VE squared minus V0 squared, which means that the thrust T can be rewritten rho A disk multiplied by VE squared minus V0 squared, squared divided by 2, okay? And that means that we now have an equation for the thrust created by the disk, which depends on the density, which we know, the area of the disk, which we know, V0, which we know, uh, is basically uh, the velocity of the air of the fluid before we've done anything to it. So, for example, if you were looking at the propeller on an airplane, that would be the velocity uh, of the plane in the air, okay? So the only unknown we have left is VE. So from the previous slide, if you have V0, the area of the disk, the density of the air, uh, and VE, so V0, I mean, all the other ones are very easy to get, so V0, A disk, uh, and the air density, but you can also get VE if you're lucky and if you're in the right condition simply by measuring it experimentally, right? So you could actually calculate the thrust with all these values, okay, that's possible. Now, something that we can calculate with even less parameters is actually the minimum power required by the disk to uh, provide a certain amount of thrust, okay? So to get that, first of all, we have to rewrite uh, the equation for thrust as V over V0 squared is equal to uh, the thrust T divided by half rho A disk V0 squared uh, getting out of the ratio plus 1. So we know from before that V disk is equal to VE plus V0 divided by 2. Therefore, we can write that V disk um, is equal to V0 over 2 multiplied by the square root of T divided by 0 0.5 rho A disk V0 squared plus 1. You then close the square root plus V0 2. So all we did here uh, is simply take the square root uh, of uh, the previous equation, uh, we added one, uh, and then we multiplied by uh, V0 over 2, okay? So we added one on either side and then multiplied by V0 over 2 of, uh, on each side to get VE plus V0 over 2 on the left-hand side and therefore V-disc, okay? So the minimum power for specific thrust is going to be equal to uh, that thrust multiplied by V disk, right? We saw that before that the power expanded by the actuator disk is the thrust it produces uh, multiplied by the velocity at the disk itself, okay? And from the previous equation, 
uh, all we need to do to obtain that is uh, multiplied v disk by by um, uh, sorry multiplied v disk by t by the thrust array and so you can write that the power is actually equal to uh, t times v0 divided by 2 multiplied by the square root of t over uh, half rho a disk v0 squared plus 1 closing the, the square root plus t v0 over 2 so that's very simple we just calculated v disk and then we use that value of v disk to obtain uh, an equation for the power that depends on a certain thrust and the velocity of the stream uh, of the stream tube upstream of the disk uh, as well as the air density and the area of the disk. So that's actually very useful because now for a certain, for a specific propeller, for a specific disk, uh, depending on how much thrust you want, you can calculate how much power you need the disk to expand and uh, with the efficiency ratios um, as well as the gearing and so on, uh, you know, basically as much as you know about your mechanical uh, efficiencies you can then uh, obtain quite accurate uh, values for how much power you need to uh, create a certain amount of thrust with a specific propeller so the efficiency we actually need is called the propulsive efficiency and it allows us to know exactly how much of the power we are giving to the actuator is uh, converted to thrust and by using this efficiency with the equation for power just before you can calculate exactly how much power you will need in your system to obtain a certain amount of thrust right so it's actually very easy to calculate and i won't go exactly into the details of how we got there uh, i think we did enough of fundamental theory that's just a very useful equation so we can actually write that the propulsive efficiency is equal to 2 divided by 1 plus ve over v0 and in the previous slide, you actually wrote an equation for VE over V0 squared. So to get VE over V0, you just have to take the square root of the first line of the previous slide. And that gives you uh, the equation for propulsion efficiency, which is 2 divided by 1 plus the square root. A square root also, be, uh, also being uh, something taken to the power of 0 0.5. Okay, So here we, ha we have in the um, denominator 1 plus t i mean the square root of t over 0 0.5 rho a disk v0 squared uh, and then plus one from the equations we just obtained it's possible to calculate dimensionless numbers which are numbers that don't have any dimensions that can be used uh, to design or calculate values from experimental data very very fast and most of the numbers i'm going to go through now are actually provided by uh, the majority of propeller manufacturers as they test or even design uh, their propellers uh, they essentially provide for example the thrust coefficient the torque coefficient the advance ratio and so on so let's first have a look at the advance ratio it's the distance that the propeller moves forwards uh, every revolution it does it's expressed j and is calculated by doing the ratio of v0 divided by n multiplied by d uh, j being the advance ratio with no dimensions and the revolutions per second and d the diameter of the propeller in meters you then have the thrust coefficient and the thrust coefficient is used to calculate the thrust in the equation t the thrust is equal to kt the thrust coefficient multiplied by rho multiplied by n squared multiplied by d power 4 and here you have uh, t the thrust in newtons rho the density in kilograms per cubic meters kt the thrust coefficient which doesn't have any dimensions uh, and is a, func a function of the design of the propeller uh, the Reynolds number of the flow going around the propeller uh, and the Mach number at the tip of the blades of the propellers as well as uh, the value of the advance ratio the Mach number at uh, the tip of the blades is of course the velocity at the tip of the blades of the propellers which is a lot more than the velocity at the base of the propellers of the blades of the propellers sorry we also have the torque coefficient uh, which is useful in the equation to calculate torque uh, q uh, equals 
kq the torque coefficient multiplies by rho multiplied by n squared multiplied by d power 5 uh, and here q is the torque in newton meters kq is a torque coefficient with no dimensions uh, and again is a function of propeller design reynolds number tip mach number and advanced ratio Finally, we can calculate the propulsive efficiency also by using these dimensionless numbers. Um, and again, the propulsive efficiency is the ratio of useful power outputted by the actuator um, with respect to the amount of mechanical power supplied to the shaft that powers and actuates the actual propellers. So, the, the efficiency can therefore be calculated as the power out multiplied by the uh, multiplied sorry divided by the power in and that's equal to thrust multiplied by v0 which is the power out divided by 2 pi and q which is basically the uh, numbers of rotations per second in radians multiplied by the torque in newton meters and at, that's equal from what we just calculated to kt rho n squared d power 4 v0 divided by kq rho n squared d power 5 2 pi n and that's equal when you cancel out and uh, do all the appropriate algebra that's equal to 1 over 2 pi kt over kq multiplied by j the advance ratio so this concludes uh, this lecture uh, and the actuator disk uh, theory part of the course uh, i hope this was useful i hope you will find good use for it and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to message me i'm of course always very happy to help you thank you guys